then we're opening ourselves up to temptation because rather than be concentrating on spiritual things, we will get sidetracked like David got sidetracked with Bathsheba. So if you turn to 2 Samuel, Two Samuel chapter twelve Verse seven And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anoint thee king over Israel, and I deliver thee out of the hand of Saul, and I give thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah and if thou had been too little I would moreover have given unto thee such and such a thing wherein hast thou despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in this sight thou hast killed Uriah Uriah sorry yes thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise a people against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thy eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with the wives in sight of thy, this son. This thou did it secretly, but I will do the thing before all Israel and before the sun. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also I put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. So Nathan the prophet comes and he confronts David, and David is quite, Okay, I'm a sinner, I've done this wrong. If we're children of God, there is a point at which when we're sinning, God will confront us with our sin. Especially if you're in ministry, especially if you are a servant of God. Make no bones about it, God will confront you with your sin. And if you're a Christian and a child of God, God will confront you concerning your sin. And if you are not a Christian or a, not a believer, God will confront you with your sin. On the day of judgment, there will be a day where he will confront you. But for those who follow God, if we sin, God will confront our sin. There is the reality of the sinful life. Psalm 51, 1 and 2. There are many people today who claim to be Christians, but claim that they are not sinners, that they are good people. If you are one of those so-called Christians, you don't understand Christianity. You're not converted. If you think that all Christians are good, and that you are good, and that you're not a sinner, and that Christians are not a sin sinners, then you've not really understood Christianity. You are not saved. You are not born again. I know that you might be angry at what I'm saying, but that's a fact. You're not born again. For someone who is born again knows that they are a sinner. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 51 verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. David acknowledges that he's a sinner. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. David knows that he is a sinner. It is the first rule of knowing God to know yourself as a sinner. Without that knowledge you will never ever know God. If you turn to Psalm 6 verse 2 We read, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. 
My soul is also so vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Verse 6, I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. They, 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 this psalmist is broken because of his sin. Psalm 32, verse 1. Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not in iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. You see, the scriptures point to our sin. You turn to 32, verse 4. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I would confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. And he shows you your sin, and you have to acknowledge your sin. If you do not, you will never know God. You'll be lost. Psalm 102, verse 3. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an earth. Why? Because he knows he's a sinner. My friend, if you want to know God, you've got to know you're a sinner. If you for one moment think that you are good and that your goodness will get you into heaven, you, you, you are lost. You don't understand the Christian faith. You don't understand the first thing about God. I know that you're probably upset with what I'm saying, but you don't. You cannot understand a knowledge of God until you understand that God is holy and you're not holy. That God is pure and you're a sinner. Until you're honest with yourself, until you look into the mirror and face the mirror and realize who you really are before God, that you are a sinner, you're never going to be saved. The vast majority of people think they're okay. The vast majority of people think they are fine. But they are not okay. They are not fine. We are not fine. We are all sinners. That is the first lesson to learn if we're going to know God. It is a lesson you will not learn or find in the annals of philosophy. You can read Hegel and Kant and David Hume. You can read any philosopher you want. You will not find the idea that you need to acknowledge you're a sinner before God. Only in the scripture do we find clear teaching that you are a sinner and that you need God. Secondly, not only are we sinners, we've got to acknowledge that we're sinners and turn away from our sin. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, 13. To Samuel chapter 12 verse 13 and David said unto Nathan I have sinned against the Lord and Nathan said unto David the Lord also have put away thy sin thou shalt not die when Nathan confronted David David acknowledged that he had done wrong before Bathsheba and repented and turned away from that sin. So if you turn to Psalm 51 verse 3, we read, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, 
that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, he admits that he's a sinner. Psalm 28, 13. Psalm 28, 13. Sorry about this. Psalm 